Hi, and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for Opulent Mobility Artist Talk. I started this off in 2013 as this tiny little show up at the Bell Arts Factory in Ventura and like had to pull teeth to get it to be for longer than an evening. Luckily, people actually wanted to come and join in. I had started doing art with wheelchairs and walkers for a bunch of different reasons, but I had always been fascinated with the devices and wondered why they look cold and clinical and kind of horrible. So I thought, okay, maybe I'm an artist. I can come up with something more interesting. My first piece was beautiful and a technical failure because I put my poor friend Peter, who loaned me his wheelchair, almost out on the floor because I made the padding too thick and he nearly fell out. And I learned how much more I needed to know and that I'm not a medical device designer, but I knew that this was an idea that might need to at least be addressed and that maybe somebody else would be interested. So I started inviting other artists. And here we are today, like people from literally all over the world. This is really wonderful and oh, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Moultrie, if you were here, would you like to join us and tell us about your work and how you got involved with this? Moultrie Jane, Opulent Prosthesis, Digital Art, 1000 by 1000 Pixels, 2020. On a stark black background, two salmon pink stylized symmetrical flowers occupy the left and lower right of the work. A bare upper arm is in the upper right, the forearm is a silver prosthesis etched with fine lace-like floral patterns. The articulated fingers have long, pale pink nails and pink knuckles and tendons. Hi, everyone. So, first of all, thank you, Laura, for organizing this, uh, you know, beautiful talk. I'll quickly talk a little bit about my art practice first before coming on to how I got involved with this. My work experience and all of my education is in the banking and finance sector. And uh, about five years ago, I finished my MBA, post which I started working. But obviously, I think at heart, I was always a creative. So I never could really fit into that corporate lifestyle. And about a year and a half ago, I just decided to, you know, kind of take that plunge full time. I left my job and I just um, focused on learning. So I'm I'm a self-taught artist and of course I have a lot of catching up to do but uh, currently I'm experimenting with uh, digital canvas primarily and murals. So my art I would say is uh, focused in spiritual themes and psychedelia and my influence definitely I would say it's the overlap of culture, mythology, folk art, um, a lot of uh, you know maybe parts of religion also within the whole Indian subcontinent and maybe I would say like ancient culture. So that is what really attracts me and that is what I love to explore. I'm really avoiding, you know, studying art too much or finding out like I try to consciously avoid, you know, studying rules of design or how things are supposed to be. So right now I'm just focusing on honing my instinct and just kind of going with my intuition, right? To kind of come up with compositions or color palettes or anything like that. And yeah, maybe let's see in future if I decide to study art or design formally, if, if I find the right uh, course or whatever the direction I want to go in. So that will probably be sometime in future. I try and work with businesses that have a purpose, right? They, where the business owner or the entrepreneur, they have a certain energy they want to channel into their branding and designing, right? So those are the kind of projects I look for. Of course, I sell my paintings, but there I focus uh, on this art form called doodling. So I basically work with pen and ink and I'm a doodle coach. So I do a lot of workshops in different styles of doodling. I take workshops in about 20 styles of doodling. I I work with students one-on-one -on -one and uh, this whole pandemic kind of you know came like a blessing in disguise because I got to virtually connect with so many people which I don't think might have been possible in a regular scenario. I work with a lot of musicians to design their album covers and authors for their book covers and I am hoping that by next year I can I'm trying to develop a product range with my own designs you know focused on the aspects that I talked about. So I'm also a telepathic and 
animal communicator, right? Animal and uh, nature communicator. I got certified about a year ago again. And that really just opened up my eyes to, you know, a world that I didn't know existed. So animals and, you know, landscapes and plants, they have such deep, distinct personalities. So that also influences me and my artwork. And I try to kind of present that visually. So a lot of my artwork is uh, centered on botanical themes and animals, of course. And then opulent mobility, I think I was just searching this website called Art Connect one day, uh, looking for some mm. open calls I could, you know, participate in because I just kind of wanted to connect with the global art community and just, you know, understand because it's all super new to me. Coincidentally, this art piece, I kind of had this idea in my mind for a while now, like maybe two years because around that time, I whenever we have any celebrations, which could be like a marriage, engagement or uh, festivals like Diwali, I mean, lots of festivals, there's lots of festivals in India. So we have this tradition of putting Mehendi, which a lot of people know as Hina. And uh, it's like a big get together. Everyone comes together. There's, you know, artists who come over, they apply Mehendi on your hands, on your feet. And it's, it's just, uh, of course, extremely aesthetic to look at but it's a very it's a bonding experience for for all of us to get together and do that and it's very sacred as well so in one of these functions it was a relative's wedding i met this lady who had lost her hand in an accident a couple of months ago and she was of course uh, still you know adjusting to the whole idea of having to live her new life and she was feeling extremely emotional that day because she couldn't really I mean she was wearing a prosthetic okay but she didn't really like how it looked and she was of course unable to kind of apply mehendi or henna on that day and uh, that is when you know I first thought that okay I wish you know we could have something that is uh, not just functional like you say it's also you know luxurious and makes you feel good about uh, you know being the way you are so that is where I think the seed was in my head and then when I read the brief for opulent mobility I was like wow this is where I need to put it on paper and see you know how it works and I hadn't really taken part in an open call earlier so I was extremely happy to you know get selected it was a very proud moment of course so yeah that was the idea and yeah I hope that somebody someday is able to make this into a reality also and we can have these really you know beautiful looking prosthetics that kind of uh, celebrate being how we are and you know not really focus on how one should be. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you.